welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel today we are discussing about hereditary angioedema is a one of the closest differential diagnosis of anaphylaxis in emergency room if we know the history properly we can treat it better so we will discuss about this topic angioedema is a rapid edema or swelling that mainly seen in the skin a subcutaneous area or a mucosal membrane it's normally an allergic reaction but it can also be hereditary so it can present as an acquired condition or hereditary when it is hereditary we can call it as hereditary angioedema the swelling happens because of fluid accumulation it tends to affect areas in the loose areas of face uh, and the subconjunctival area and uh, limbs and genitals the most common finding will be swelling of the face and lips Hereditary angioedema or C1 esterase inhibitor deficiency is a disease characterized by recurrent episodes of angioedema. Without any rashes, that is very important, angioedema will be there. Normally when we have allergic reactions, you can have arctic area also. Here we don't see any wheels or pruritis, which most often, often affects the skin and mucus tissue, mucosal tissues, mainly in the upper respiratory tract and GI tract. GI tract involvement may produce colicky abdominal pain uh, and it can subside without even without any treatment hereditary angioedema is an autosomal dominant inherited condition so the main problem is c1 inhibitor deficiency c1 inhibitor is a inhibitor which functions as a major anti inflammatory protein in the body it has its effect via inhibition of the protease of the complement system contact system of the coagulation so when there is a deficiency or activity is defective patient can have recurrent angioedema without arctic area that is very important in hereditary angioedema only swelling of the face and lips will be there there will not be any itching pruritus Uh, in the patient but whenever we have this type of patients we have to always rule out ac inhibitor intake in this patient because ac inhibitor intake also can present in same uh, fashion in this type of patients now we can see the mechanism of hereditary angioedema here it's a bradykinin induced angio- angioedema c1 esterase inhibitor is a protease of the complement system it inhibits part- partial steps within the calicrin kinin system of coagulation so there are deficiency which can lead to increased bradykinin formation ac inhibitors which inhibits the degradation of bradykinin via the angiotensin convertase can also lead to an increase in the bradykinin levels so sometimes patient can have this type of reactions when they take ac inhibitor even without hereditary angioedema but a patient who is having hereditary angioedema this can also be aggravated by ac inhibitors so if the patient is developing problem because of ac inhibitors we have to stop this drug ac inhibitor is a drug used in hypertensive management now we can see the clinical features it commonly affects face extremities abdomen oropharynx larynx and some patients can have genito urinary tract involvement it's a dominant a autosomal dominant disease so family history will be there in many patients so when there is no family history we have to search for other causes for angioedema most of the patients will have a low complement c4 level c1 inh protein level c1 inh function also should be measured in this type of patients 25% of the patients can have this angioedema spontaneously or in some patients there may be some reasons like ac inhibitor intake or something normally this type of patients who is having angioedema due to allergy they respond to antihistamines but hereditary angioedema will not respond to antihistamine therapy 
Normally, when the patient comes with angioedema, itching and all, in emergency room, we start antihistamines, steroids, all these things. But here, in hereditary angioedema, they will not respond to antihistamines. That is, that will be an important clue for diagnosis in emergency room if we don't know the past history of the patient. Now, other type, other type of conditions we should always think in that most important condition is ACE inhibitors induced angioedema. That can also occur in patients who is taking antihypertensive medicines. So, this the uh, the clinical findings may start within four weeks of the onset of the uh, drug. Now, this is a picture. We can see here patient is having uh, normal lips and face after developing angioedema you can see the lips are enlarged face is edematous eyes may be very small this type of patients can have breathing difficulty also because of oropharynx and laryngeal involvement they can have diarrhea abdominal pain because of GI tract involvement there is a flow chart to make a diagnosis of hereditary angioedema. If angioedema occurs in a patient, look for urticaria. If urticaria is there, then it may be due to an hypersensitivity reaction or drug allergy or any dust allergy, something like that. If urticaria is not there, only angioedema is there, then we have to consider bradykinin induced angioedema. Then we have to take a detailed history whether the patient is on AC inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers. If AC is, is, history is there, then mostly it is because of AC inhibitor induced angioedema. If that history is not there, if family history of angioedema is there, then check C4 level, complement C4 level. Then obtain C1 inhibitor level and function. So, this is the approach towards a patient who is having angioedema whenever we get angioedema in emergency room always look for any other type of allergic re reactions or rashes on the patient that will give you a clue and family history is very important history of ac inhibitor uh, intake is also very important now there are different types of angioedema type 1 type 2 type 3 and acquired angioedema in that each type there are different patterns of complement and C1 inhibitor antigenic levels that will tell you whether it's type 1, type 2, type 3 or if the patient is on AC inhibitor that is also very important so that should be ruled out. Whatever it is the treatment will be same for almost all types. Now one of the closest differential diagnoses of angioedema is anaphylaxis. So, anaphylaxis treatment is totally different from hereditary angioedema treatment. That's why we have shown this picture here. When you have a patient who is having allergic reactions, we have to take care of his airway, breathing, circulation, disability and exposure. Look for any life-threatening airway or breathing problem. If patient is having suspected anaphylaxis and anaphylactic shock, Adrenaline is the drug of choice. Adrenaline, chlorpheniramine, malate and steroids can be used. But in patients who is having angioedema, this should not be tried. But most of the time when we get a hereditary angioedema case in emergency room, first time, that will have same clinical finding of anaphylaxis. So naturally we give this type of drugs, but that may not respond at all. Now, we will see how to manage this case in emergency room. Normally, we have a tendency to give adrenaline, chlorpheniramine, malate, steroid, all these things. But these patients may not respond. If we have a history of uh, hereditary angioedema in this patient, that will give a clue for this diagnosis and treatment will be better. So, ideally, treatment options are C1 inhibitor. That is plasma derived C1 inhibitor, esterase inhibitor, concentrate. Recommended dose is 20 units per kg. 
or recombinant C1 inhibitor can be used 50 units per kg or bradykinin V2 receptor antagonist that can be given that is 30 mg can be given calicrine inhibitor can be given but these drugs may not be available in routine emergency room uh, or routine emergency practice so we have to go for fresh frozen plasma that is very important plasma contains c1 esterase inhibitor plasma is a second line therapy in acute conditions but since it is available everywhere this has become a first line treatment for patients who is having acute attacks two units of plasma can be given initially this dose can be repeated every two to four hours until there is a clinical improvement so there are a lot of drugs available for this uh, attack acute attack but unfortunately only plasma will be available in most of the hospitals so we should we can use ffp for this purpose so this is a chart where you can see all the drugs which are available for this condition hereditary angioedema but unfortunately these drugs are not available in many centers so we have to use ffp now prophylactic or long term treatment of hereditary angioedema can we can use synthetic 17 alpha alkaloid androgens like denazole or stanozole that can be tried in patients who is having recurrent episodes of attack so dose is 200 mg per day denazole that is a widely available drug that can be given or stanozole can also be given so that is adult dose is 2 mg per day we have discussed one of the rare complications or uh, which can mimic anaphylaxis that is angioedema hereditary angioedema is a genetical disorder patient can have family history always take a history of ac inhibitors in this type of patients remember patient can have facial edema lip edema but there is no other features of allergy like no rashes no arctic area that will give a clinic clinical clue and patient may not respond to antihistamines in acute attacks. Thank you.